Good morning. It's now afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much for coming to our press conference where we are embarking on the review of the editorial policies. I think as journalists you are aware of what has happened before and we are basically today going to talk to you around the issues of the editorial policies. And without wasting time, I would like to call upon the chap oh, before before we do that, let me introduce the team that is before you. We have got the chairperson of the interim board, Mekanyisile Kweyama, who is with us here. Uh, next to me, and then in the middle there, we have got the acting chief group CEO of the SABC, Ntate Raditabo, and at, at the end, we have got Ntate Filimuilwa, who is the head of uh, regulatory division in the organization. Uh, uh, joining us right now is a board member, Ntate Krishnaidu, and then we've got other executive members, the acting uh, COO, Mebesi Tugwan. I wanted you to sit down first. And this is the panel that will be talking to us around the issues of editorial policies. Time is not on our side. Can I take this opportunity to ask the chair? to at least give us a background and what this whole thing is about, and then we'll get into the meet with Ntate uh, Muilwa later on. Do you want everybody to be here? Here. <laughs> Chair, they want everybody to be here on the podium. I was hoping to be cut some slack today and speak from the chair, but I don't get that lucky. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the SABC. I hope that today we've redeemed ourselves. The last time we had a press conference, we started about an hour and a half late. So in your eyes, I hope we are improving, uh, running from one thing to the other. And today really is, is a simple, uh, communication to, to yourselves as our colleagues in the media. We are today launching the review project of the SABC editorial policies. The purpose of the review is to resuscitate the consultation process with the public uh, following uh, the ICASA's complaints and compliance committee that the SABC had not complied with the requirements of section 6.6 .6 of the Broadcasting Act in reviewing or amending the 2004 editorial policies. This project is intended to ensure that the public is properly consulted and that the final policies that will emanate from the process are compliant, are legitimate, and reflective of South Africa's views and sentiments. We know that we are the public broadcaster, we belong to the public, so as much as we, we have work to do in ensuring that we, we deliver on our mandate, but we also have to ensure that the public has been given an opportunity to input into those policies. You are aware that in 2003, the SABC developed editorial policies uh, following the amendments of the Broadcasting Act of 1999. The po those policies were amended and developed through a public consultation process that took place across the country. The policies were subsequently filed with ICASA and uh, were as required by the Broadcasting Act and have been binding on the SABC till today as we speak. In 2013, the SABC started a process to review the editorial policies, which then culminated in the 2016 policies that were filed with ICASA. 
However, when those policies were lodged in 2016, uh, there were a number of uh, organizations and members of the public who raised objections with ICASA, feeling that they had not been properly consulted. That process took place in October of 2016. Those complaints were lodged once again uh, legally in terms of Section 6.6 .6 of the Broadcasting Act as amended. And the main complaint was that the SABC was alleged to have failed to adhere to Section 6.6 .6 regarding public participation. So not adequate consultation in the adoption of the 2016 amended editorial policies. ICASA ruled in favor of the complainants and ordered that the SABC should, I quote, the amended by the SABC board of its editorial policies were invalid in terms of the Broadcasting Act number no. four of 1999. This ruling holds until we apply corrective action. So what that meant is that we reverted to the 2004 editorial policies which had been adopted by ICASA in the first place. We are currently governed by the 2004 editorial policies. Until we properly conduct the public consultation process, we amend the, the, the policies, we get the approval from the board, submit to ICASA, and we get the go ahead from ICASA. We have to this end put together a project team and some of the executives sitting around this table make up part of that project team. This project team will facilitate consultation with members of the public across the country to get their input on the current policies. Those policies and that input from the public will then come to the interim board so that we can draft and revise as per the public participation process. The board will consider those submissions. We will then send out a final draft to the public to ensure that they have input on that final draft once again. We know that when we undertake these processes, often you will get comments that says, I said put a comma between the two lines and you didn't. So we will consider matters of content, of context, substantive input into the policies. Once that has been done, the interim board will then file the amended policies to ICASA as required by the law. We then, through this platform, are calling on the public to make the inputs so that they are part of shaping the future of the public broadcaster. When the SABC executives speak to this conference, they will also talk to the schedules. We will be going far and wide. We will be holding uh, sessions at various venues, urban and rural, town halls and under the trees to ensure that everybody has an opportunity to make their submissions as the public. We know that some submissions will come via organizations, others will come directly from the members of the public, but we appreciate that not everyone can come to Auckland Park, so we will go out to the public and make sure that we get the necessary submissions. So please take out your pens, take out your microphones, take out uh, your emails, and do make an input into these editorial policies that in the end affect everybody in this country, South Africa, as the public. I thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, as you are aware, what we are asking from you as our partners is to assist us in making sure that the public out there know that they need to participate in this process so that the end product will be as inclusive as possible. We can do as much, but we need your assistance to do that with us. Without wasting more time, because I want us to be out of here as soon as possible so that we can write and then make sure that all the things are out there for the people of South Africa to know. 
Can I take this opportunity to ask Dr. Fili Muilwa to come and take us into the meat of what is going to be going on? And from there, we'll do question and answers. Um, thank you very much, Kaiser. Thank you very much, members of the media and the board. Um, I'm just going to do just a quick overview. Um, one would assume that the editorial policy have been in existence. One would assume that one has an insight of what it is. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm not going to give you a long, boring detail of what language is all about, but I'm just going to give you a snapshot of that and just give you a process of what our plans are so that you're able to understand how you're going to roll out the, the, the electoral policies. But I must just start by saying also that uh, thank you, Chair, for having stolen the thunder. Um, she has actually given you the whole gist um, in terms of where we begin and where we end. But what I, I want to highlight is that this is not a review of only one policy. We have about six editorial policies that are dictated to in terms of the act. Number one policy is the news and editorial policy. As newsmakers, as news writers, I think you are well aware that it's all about balanced coverage, it's all about having proper um, editorial uh, pr practices in place, it's all about ensuring that as a public broadcaster, we're able to reflect the diversity, the length and breadth of South Africa in our news coverage. In terms of programming, the big question is what informs our programming? I think that's what the members of the public, as we go and do the roadshows, what informs the decision-making process of that? And this process is exactly intended to gather that kind of input, that as we put our dramas, as we put our children's programming, as we put all programs on air, what informs that? That's as the critical point that we want to consult with the members of the public uh, around our, our programming. And this goes across our platforms, whether radio or television and any other platform that we'll be using. Then there's a whole question of local content. Um, local content, it has been very, very topical, as you might be aware. ICAS has reviewed the quotas for local content for both television and radio that were supposed to be um, uh, 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 complying with. Radio starts this year and television starts in 18 months. And therefore, but the big question is, South Africans, are we as a public broadcaster giving you enough and representing enough in terms of the local content? Those are the kind of issues that I think we're anticipating going to engage with the members of the public out there. The other big question which is very emotive is language. We have 11 languages that are covered on radio. We have difficulty in covering all 11 languages on television given the three channels and given the um, that DTT is not yet uh, in place and therefore that constraint will remain. So the big question is going forward, how do we ensure that language representativity is well covered in terms of our, uh, our services? But over and above that, there are always questions about issues of purity of language, whether it was using the language that is originally and acceptable. We live in a very diverse society. The young generation have their own way of looking at the concept of language. The old and the conservative, I think Keza, when you see him here, he wants to speak a proper CPA. He doesn't want to have something that cut corners. So, but we have, that's a diversity and the nice thing about being a diverse society. Then the other critical policies on religion, the most emotive subject that actually makes the world fall apart. Religion, how representative are we in terms of the religious um, groupings and denominations that we have? It's not an easy subject. If you remember our policy was saying, we look at the majority uh, religious um, uh, 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 philosophy or um, category in terms of the various you know, groupings that we have. But this is still subject to us saying, have we done good? Have we done enough? Do you want to give more directive in terms of how we can do better in terms of religion? We know how much contestation is, is this in this area. The SABC used to have a board, but unfortunately th th that, you know, looks into the whole representativity of, langu of, of languages, we need to assess and go back and say, can we still look into that? Can we still come with a structure? Can we still make sure that people have voices and can access the SABC and say, look, we also want to be represented? Um, and it's very interesting with, when you look at what currently happens with the uh, council, is it a committee for, lang for religious? religious yes. How now religion is being assessed in South Africa by that uh, 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 commission? whether you know south africans are being given a fair deal in terms of various churches is very very interesting as a public broadcaster those are the kind of aspects that we need to look into how do we decide that no your church is controversial i mean really can we put you on air while people are eating grass for example 
th those are the kind of issues that we need to engage as a public broadcaster. So we are saying as a public broadcaster, we are back to basics. We want to hear the views of the South Africans so that we are able to inculcate them in the final editorial policy. I don't want to waste time. The values of equality, editorial independence, nation building, diversity, human dignity, accountability, and transparency, those are the values that were informing the current editorial policy. And the big question is, are we doing enough? How are we doing on these values? Should we retain them? So those are the questions that we want to engage you on. The big one, upward referral. We want to hear views. We don't have answers. Well, since South Africans has this worked, do you want to retain it? Do you want the editor-in-chief to be the GCEO? Those are the kind of issues. What lessons have we learned around this? So this is a discussion that we need to engage South Africans on in terms of how we run our business. Then I can quickly say we we, 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 I can go to the process in terms of how we're going to be engaging with the, the members of the public. We will be uh, running roadshows, as the chair has said, from the 31st of uh, August until the end of, sorry, from the 31st of July until the end of August. We will be doing two provinces parallel at the same time. So don't be surprised why nine provinces are going to finish them. So there'll be two teams at the same time, one going to one province, running with the uh, consultation process in each province and the other. So our plan is to finish consultation process by the 31st. But what is most important, which you may want to highlight for us, is that this is not an open-ended process in terms of time. We have given members of the public until the 31st of August to make submissions. Therefore, people are not going to wait only when we come on the 24th and say, but you come on the 24th, why do you give me 31st? It starts now on the official launch that members of the public can make submissions and we are going to give you the contacts and access of the policy itself and where people can be able to make submissions. But like I was indicating, all the provinces are covered. We'll be having uh, hearings in each province. We are going to be mostly at community halls. We are going to fly this um, on our platform so that people from time to time, we're going to be running promos until the end of this uh, process so that members of the public and yourselves can know exactly what is happening where. Well, we've actually even um, on our website, which I'm going to give you now, SABC, www.sbc.co front slash editorial policy. That's where you can access our policies. The second, where you can email your input is edit editorial at sabc.co.za. Editorial at sabc.co.za. We have also, with the assistance of our news, also created a further platform to, to ease the congestion. Our news website, um, www.sabc.co.za, front slash news. If you go into that website, we also are going to have um, a lot of what you may term podcasts, a lot of broadcast material that you want to, under, to, to access from the regions, even from here, um, is going to be accessed through that website. You can also be able to make uh, 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 electronic submission. There is an electronic form that is attached in that website where you can write your name, make your input, those who are not technophobic. So we are trying to cater, one, those that I can access the um, electronic uh, media. The second one is those who really still love the post office and those who cannot access anything. Please, this thing works. I still check my mail, eh? I still get those real letters, Mr. Miloya, in areas. So, so what, what, our private back X1, Oakland Park, Johannesburg, 2006, we are going to be also uh, promoting this to those members of the public that really cannot be able to access any of this media, whether it's fax uh, or email. And then our fax number is 011-714-4508. 011-714-4508. That will be our fax number for those that are still reliant on faxes. And um, our telephone number, should you have any problem around, hey, you know what, maybe it's my computer, I cannot access this. Where do I call? 714 Johannesburg Code, 9111. Or you can call 011-714-9797. We have a call center that has been prepared precisely to deal with these kind of inquiries. They can be able to assist you get the electoral policy either by sending to you, or they can be able to even make a referral of an inquiry if you need more information. And they will give you the 
number of people or they will divert your call to a people within the team that can be able to assist you. Over and above, those who have not access to anything but who are, are able to move, we can make submissions and our offices, SABC offices in the provinces will be having a box uh, to drop in your submission and um, there will be a register where you also put your name to say I'm Philly, this is my submission, please when you deliberate ensure that you also hear my voice. Um, we are also going to be publishing, um, they are now currently on the internet, but they frequently ask questions. Um, to assist people to understand. And we have done this in all 11 languages so that members of the public don't have to go through a very strenuous exercise of reading this uh, English-sized document that is written in a very, um, you know, tied language that ordinary people might not understand. But we have tried in all languages. For example, it starts with why are we supposed to have auditorial policies? What is the purpose? You know, how can I? You know, it gives all the, you know, logical questions that any ordinary member of the society will love to really ask questions, and they are there in all the uh, 11 languages. So that's precisely the process. We'll be going to provinces from the 31st, finishing on the 31st again, and then after that, as the chair has said, we'll consolidate, come up with a draft, and that draft is going to be taken back to the public to say, hey, have you heard us? Have you covered your view? And then from there, after that, we can be able to file with the CASA. So that's the long and short from it, and I hope I've been able to help you in terms of giving information. Thank you, Kaiser. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Philly. And I think before we get into the Q&As around this issue, we need to play. Is it ready? Give them a privilege of the adverts. You don't show it to them. We just wanted to show you the, the kind of adverts that we are going to be putting up there because I saw them being. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, while they are sorting it out, maybe we will start. But anybody who is seated here can answer the questions because they are still looking for, for this because I, I just wanted you to be the privileged ones to see this. Yes. Can what kinds of? Can just put off the light there at the back, so that you have a you are the first people to see this uh, adverts. What guides us? Is it something you can see? We need deliverance from sin. Here. What leads us on to greater experiences? Is it the words of our sacred texts? The advice of our elders? Or is it the actions of our people? The strength of our beliefs? Or the voices of our citizens? Your country is guided by the voices of its people, and your broadcaster is dependent on your voice to guide it. Get your copy of the SABC's editorial policy and have your say. This is the first one that you are going to be seeing. Uh, this, this will be going through throughout the whole month so that we are able to then uh, generate as much responses as possible. And especially when you look at that, Philly, you are talking about the issue of religion. We even have a, a court judgment now about religion. In what guides us? Yes, let's go ahead. What guides us? Is it something you can touch? Hear. Feel. Or see. What leads us on to greater experiences? Is it leaders on a soapbox, spouting rhetoric for the crowd? The advice of our elders? Or is it the actions of our people? 
the strength of our beliefs or the voices of our citizens. Your country is guided by the voices of its people and your broadcaster is dependent on your voice to guide it. Get your copy of the SABC's editorial policy and have your say. Thank you. Therefore, these are the adverts that you're going to be seeing and like we have indicated earlier on, there are a variety of issues that are there. It's not only about news and current affairs. It's about languages. It's about religion. It's about many other things because we are looking at all of those and we're reviewing them. And the question that always comes up is, what do we do in the meantime? As the chair indicated in the beginning, just to reiterate, we have reverted back to the 2004 editorial policy. This is the one that is governing us now as we speak. Therefore, the one that we want to do is to change, to uh, try and review that one, to come up with a new uh, one, or basically the reviewed one for uh, this year, which will be 2017. Yes. Okay, let us get into the Q&A. can ask any one of the people there and take it from there. You know the drill. I don't have to explain. Okay, um, good afternoon. My name is Neil Gob. I work for The Times. I've just got one question. Um, I know during the press briefing at the um, Portfolio of Communications, the board had planned to reverse the local content which was introduced by Mr. Mutone. Now, with the public participation, I just want to find out if, what if there's 80% of the provinces um, decide that they want the local content to continue to be in place? I mean, that after that you guys, I mean, I know that you guys plan to reverse it. So what will then be um, the plan, or what will be the way forward um, from the public participation? Thank you. OK. Next. Hi, my name is Michael. I'm from the Media Online. Two quick questions. Firstly, how much difference do you think there is going to be from the 2004 policies in the new uh, 2017 policies, i.e., how much different will they be? <coughs> and then secondly, You've certainly made a number of channels through which people can give submissions. How big is your team going to be who's going to review these submissions? Because we can expect there to be many, many, many ones. So you have to have a big team in order to review all these submissions. Okay. Another one? Is that all? Okay. While you're thinking about... oh. You can go ahead. Uh, it's Menelis Ndwandwe from Highway Radio in Deben. Uh, I would like to know about the finances. I know that it will cost, it will, we'll have to depend on the budget when you do these consultations. Uh, I know I've read that SAPC has been struggling with finances. Do you have that money to go ar all, all around the provinces? <laughs> okay, that's good. Maybe let us respond to these uh, three questions. Do you, I think, Chair, they still want you to come here. I know we have made provisions to have you speak from there, but the mic for the television is here. <laughs> I will address what I can and then also ask the executives to to pitch in i i think we are out there to he, to listen to the public and hear what they say but i also think as we listen to the public for instance if a submission comes in that says move the sabc news department to bulukwan uh, some things have to be practical and make sense and uh, fit into the strategy of the, a of the SABC. So, <laughs> <laughs> I said SABC. <laughs> Don't read what you want. Hi, no, no, you must hear why I'm glad I'm on this mic, so you don't misquote me. So we really have to to just contextualize some of the things. You know, when we talked about 9010 on, on one of the press conferences we had, we talked about the budget implications. 
So we will get submissions from the advertising community. We will get submissions from all those. So we, we are not here to preempt. We are going to hear everything that's being said. And once it's in front of us, we will then motivate why we can and why we cannot do some things. Uh, the detail and the team, I want the executives to respond to that. But I want to say that from the interim board side, we have said that we should uh, make sure that we have uh, adequate people to, to do that. We are not going to have to employ other people. I think we are capacitated enough to be able to deal with that. But uh, the executives can go into more detail if, if that's necessary. Uh, Highway Radio asked about money. But you also know that we've been paying salaries every month and that our lights haven't been turned off and that our water hasn't been turned off. So we, we really, in the past three months, have seen that there has been a change. We are not out of the red, but we're not drowning as we were in, in the past. And we, we, we have had to juggle, as we've, we've previously uh, confided in, in, in the public, that we are having to juggle. But I think at this point, we really are, are making ends meet. Uh, we need to get more money so that we can take the SABC where it needs to go. But uh, in terms of making sure that the everyday mandate and the things that we have to do are being carried out, are being carried out, we do do that. So don't worry about us. We are, we are managing. We are tightening the belt, uh, but we we are not compromising on on the necessary things that we need to do. Thanks. See you. Good afternoon. Um, I'm going to respond to three questions. I think the first one was the extent of the expected changes from the current uh, set of editorial policy, the 2004, to the envisage. So, um, we, we, we can't tell you that because the space itself has had a lot of changes. There's been a lot of evolution. There's been technological evolution. There's been, uh, as well as uh, other means, uh, apps and all other uh, means, as well as uh, social media has also evolved in itself. So we're really open for South Africans to tell us um, how they want it done so so weren't able to to respond to to that and then there was a question about um are we going to afford um sending out all these teams across the country and um, one is you do know that we also are have offices um around the country in, in all the provinces actually so are we utilizing our teams there and also uh, because this is not just an sabc project, yes, we are enabling it, but this is a South African project. This we are doing for South Africans. And we know that as we are rolling it out, we are going to be getting um, help from South Africans who care. And lastly, I think, no, you, the, the, the chair spoke to the 90%. If we get response that says, um, please bring back 90%. It, it wasn't because we don't believe that South African, a public broadcaster should not reflect South Africans. Um, it was also about how we did it and also um, whether we were ready at the time when we did it. So that, as a public broadcaster, we're committed to reflecting South Africans. We will always will be. Thank you. Thank you. Philly, do you want to tell us how big or you are comfortable with the answer as it is? Because the question is, how big is your trip? You're comfortable. No, if you're comfortable, it's fine. Okay, you are happy. Okay, now that's good. Yeah, this issue of 9010 always comes up every time we, we, we deal with these issues. And the, and the one thing that I think I need to say in front of you now around this issue is, Every time people speak about it, they speak about other things, but they want to give an impression that the SABC doesn't care about local content. And that is not true. 
We are the ones that are developing the industry. We are the ones that are going out there to make sure that we get as much local content as we can. And we have made it very clear that we are not anti-local uh, transformation and anti-local content. We are basically saying, let's do it the right way. And, and, and that is the message that people need to, to understand out there. And that is why some of the issues that we raised around it were the fact that radio stations can take it as far as they want to take it, depending on, on, on their audiences and whether it resonates with all the stakeholders within that radio stations. Okay, any other question? Okay. I just wanted to find out, once these policies have been put into place, what protections are going to be put in place to ensure that if individuals do come into the SABC, they don't change the policies? For example, the local content um, saga, which may or may not have hurt the SABC, depending on who you ask. Okay. <laughs> okay. Any other? Is that the last question? Are you comfortable? Or are you, okay. Are there any measures? Who wants to take it? CEO, Chair? <laughs> How do you protect them? Thank you very much, uh, Kaiser, and uh, good afternoon to your colleagues. We, we always have uh, policies and we always have uh, protection as in uh, the processes that we put in place, but we can never say never. Uh, we, we just are going to be depending on the integrity that we're trying to build back for the organization. And we are hoping that the executives that will be in place would be able to comply and adhere to the guidelines and the policies that we would have put in place. The process that we have started is really that of um, building the integrity that we think have been eroded over time. And uh, we can only hope that um, whoever will be following uh, uh, up on us would adhere and keep to the same policies that we are putting in place. We cannot have more protection than that of uh, placing our hope on the executives that will be coming in place. And I think, as you have rightfully pointed out, that it depends on who you ask and uh, it depends on uh, how those people are applying themselves in terms of the solid policies that we're trying to put in place to win our integrity back. I thank you. Okay, Chair, just to add. <laughs> thank you. I think maybe from the interim board side, we need to, to just re-emphasize that uh, part of our mandate is to restore credibility and uh, the governance at the SABC. And it's through lack of governance that uh, today policies can be changed without going through a proper process. I think we should also accept that policies are vibrant and they change with the times, they change with the audiences that we have to serve, and there is nothing untoward about reviewing policies as and when the time requires and the audiences require, and the times just say that we are you know, I have an eight-year-old and a five-year-old grandchild, and I can't expect that when they are watching TV outside of the cartoons, that they will be getting the same content that I'm getting. So that means there has to be change, but change has to be within a framework. It needs to ensure that the public participates, that the necessary governances are followed in the SABC. And as a board, those are some of the things that we are 
tasked with establishing and ensuring that once we put the lock on that, that it can only be opened via ticking off the boxes, that the process has been followed, the public has been consulted, the shareholder is on board and all those things. So just to clear that so that we are not saying we will never change. When change is required, it will happen, but it must happen in, in, the, proper, in the proper way. It's, or how, how long is that going to take to be... To I think the framework is in place, you know, from some of the processes that you have seen, that how, we, how we got here as an interim board is precisely a, a testament to the fact that there, were, there was operation outside of the framework. And that's why when time came to correct, the necessary committees were put into place. Parliament was able to then say, let's go back to what we are supposed to do. So we shouldn't make breaking the rules the norm. So now it looks like uh, when people do the wrong things, it's, that's what goes. So the framework for doing the right thing is there but it's when people go out of that framework that they end up doing wrong things. And that's why you are able to pull them back and say, no, otherwise they would have been in the right and they should remain in there because they, they have stretched the framework. But the framework is intact. Uh, the institution is intact as long as the human nature is the one that causes the things to fall apart. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and I think, uh, my colleagues in the media I think sometimes you also have to go and read some of these legislations that governs these processes because they have got these checks and balances in them to assist you into doing what you're supposed to do. Processes are very clear to say this needs to happen for this to happen. And that is why when people challenge it, they are able to succeed in some of these issues. Okay, any other question? We've got a long road. To the 31st of August, let us work with each other and assist the public of South Africa reshape the public broadcaster. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>